As you start to master reality shifting, even if you're just experimenting with it, one thing that can happen is that you can try to control it. You can try to dodge any sort of lesson, any sort of opportunity that makes you feel particularly hectic inside. Any time you feel overwhelmed or insecure, I want you to remember this. Diamonds are formed with a ton of pressure. And sometimes it is the miracles in life that help us to awaken beyond the ordinary existence, that we are primed and conditioned to believe that's all we have. I was out walking tonight and I had this thought of, I am just so grateful. And it was a feeling too. I ha- I'm just so grateful that life is not as mundane as I thought it was many, many years ago, decades ago, I remember just this feeling of apathy and boredom, like, wow, all we do is just eat, work, and play. And life revolves around this formula that, and at that time it was, you would go to work at a job that you hated. (laughs) I was a grocery bagger in Texas in the summers and so it would be like sweltering hot it would be like 100 degrees outside and I'd bag all of these groceries for like these elderly people after school and then I'd have to like go and take them to their vehicles and it was the most miserable existence ever and I had to wear this awful uniform with this thick khaki pants and this red shirt that, you know, represented the company. It was a small grocery store in small town, Texas, Brookshire's. And I don't even know if it exists anymore. It's probably been bought out by one of the bigger chains. Anyway, so it was a miserable job. It actually was. (laughs) And I remember working my way up to be a cashier, hoping and thinking that it would be better. And I trained myself I would play games with myself because it was so boring it was just so incredible beep 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 how are you doing today oh I'm fine beep 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 I trained myself on speed checking because I was just so horribly just just I just needed something to kill the time I would literally watch the clock in agony and so I just would check the groceries as fast as I possibly could even though this was small town Texas there would be no lines I'd be like racing through and then I would try to memorize all of the codes as fast as I could and so I I made a game out of it because it was just a horrific experience. And so when we talk about AI coming to take over our jobs, I say, thank God. (laughs) Because seriously, some of those positions are miserable, 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 terrible. I don't recommend it for anybody. And so I remember at that time in my life thinking like, is this it? Is this okay? Maybe I could work up to being a manager. Okay, I'm go. I'm definitely going to school. <laughs> I'm definitely. I'm definitely going to college because I can't live like this. You know, I I can't live like this. And there are some people that come to this awareness, right? But as I was walking today, reflecting backwards and thinking about the prescriptive life that I saw everybody living then. And seeing what is looming on the horizon for us now. And also having been awakened spiritually, consciously, whatever framework we want to use, right? Whatever flavor of a framework. And there are many out there. But having had an awakening experience, realizing that there are multiple reality layers, now realizing I can create my own reality layer and I don't have to be a checker 
or a bagger, I can actually be a rock star reality shifter. <laughs> you know, like I can I can literally go wherever I want to. Maybe. I'm still figuring that part out. But I from the vantage point and the experiences that I've had have come to believe that actually it's really open <laughs> and you have a lot of latitude and it may not happen in the time that you expect it to happen, but pretty much you can map it out. You can script it out. You can wish it out. You don't even have to write in a manifestation journal. You can make it happen. I don't know if everybody can do this. That's still a question mark, right? There might be a subset of people that have this ability. Maybe it's good karma from past lives. I'm not sure, but there is something to it. And doesn't that open the door to such an amazing perspective on life? You no longer have to be trapped. Now, the thing is, is that sometimes you may have to go through what appears to be traps to realize who you actually are, right? And what you actually want. And you have to understand what your alignment is and what your abilities are and there are a lot of you I've I've spoken to you there are a lot of you that have gifts that have abilities that transcend our understanding of the five senses that transcend what medicine and science and the mainstream know some people call it psychic gifts and the clairs but i believe that we use that terminology because we don't have it understood in the mainstream right and so it gets bucketed with this term that is kind of unfavorable because it kind of makes it it depends on your walk of life right but it kind of makes it a little fringe and a little out there when I think that these gifts are actually part of the normal human experience, but it's the societies that we have built in the past that actually have bootstrapped them to be hidden and to not be validated and to sort of be like under the covers. And, it, you know, it's like you can see this in our compartmentalization. A long time ago, you could only be good at math or English and God forbid you be good at both right and so it's like we created these societies based on the industrial revolution that was like here is your factory job on the assembly line all we need you to do is to pick up this object put a tag on it and put it back on the line don't you dare try to think we don't need thinking people right? And so this is the origin of our last revolution, where they took tradesmen and craftsmen and reduced beautiful works of like wood, furniture making is what I'm thinking of, and reduced it down to assembly line commercial particle wood that pretty much comes mostly pre-assembled. And so as a result, the aesthetics of the modern everyday home, and we started using plastics, <laughs> you know, like, it, it's just, it, it's just, meh. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. And it's loaded with chemicals too. And we don't really have an affordable option. And so there are these trades that are no longer with us, like blacksmithing, and I mean, I guess there are like welders and it's kind of niche now, right? But as a result, we took thinking people that were creating and turned them into machines. And this was reflected in our educational programs as well. And so what we've done is we've sort of suppressed the natural innate abilities of humans. And as a result, we have fractured our abilities into these little compartments and we are told how we're supposed to be and this is echoed through society and you're supposed to be happy with this life and this job that doesn't challenge you and that you hate 
and that has a schedule that doesn't actually work for your circadian rhythm. Like everybody's supposed to have the same circadian rhythm. And there are some legitimate night owls out there. Hey, what's what's up? It's probably like 2 or 3 a.m. No, it's 4 a.m. And you're listening to this. That's great. I'm glad. <laughs> anyway, so the point is, is that the way that societies have been built in the past needs to change. But the way that it changes is through challenges and is through suffering. This is the point of it, right? Because without the suffering, we would never have the impetus to change unless we were very, very future focused. And some of you are, myself included. Now we don't have to go through so much suffering to realize that something doesn't work for us, right? It's a process. But when we are largely unconscious as a society, this means that we have to do the bagging jobs. We have to work the jobs that we don't want to realize that we hate it. We have to have crushing inflation to bring in things like UBI or to revolutionize the systems and the policies and the procedures that honestly for a lot of people didn't really work for. You know, I think of my parents and they were our creatives, but they fit themselves into a stable, secure job where they could retire and have a life that they wanted. And when they were going through that, that was the only way for the most part. And now we are looking at the future and realizing that, hey, maybe all of the student loan debt, I'm all for higher education. I believe that it's really, really important. But I also believe that there are a lot of people that are enslaved by their debt. I know people personally and it it crushes them. And it's like, okay, so you get this nice job if you get the job, right? And there are many programs where you don't get the job at the end. It's kind of like this illusion that we all build over time. When it started, it was like that. But then the way that the natural evolution of society and higher education came to be, it diluted everything, right? It doesn't mean that the degree wasn't valuable because it taught you how to think, It taught you how to plan. It taught you how to use other parts of your brain that you wouldn't have otherwise been able to be be challenged and have the pressures to do, right? When you're afraid of failing, you do things that you don't want to do, like study. Otherwise, you'd never study. (laughs) Sure, you'd study for the things that you want to, but you wouldn't study for that random calculus exam or you wouldn't study for that economics class that actually did give you some benefit, you know, in the end, even if you don't see how it applies. But it helps you understand, hey, I should start a 401k. You know, it helps you understand things that you wouldn't have learned otherwise. But the crushing debt that comes along with it is the suffering that needs to change. And these are the challenges that produce change at a mass level. And so by not fearing the challenges, by seeing it for what it is, a need and a call for revolution. And I don't mean like in the past with witch hunts and violence and things like that. If you're into that, sure, go for it, right? Keep me out of it, please. (laughs) And ideally my daughter, unless she chooses that path for herself. And then, you know, I have to respect her free will too. I'm not big on the bloodshed, personally. I think that we can solve problems without um, driving people off of a Golden Gate Bridge. You know, like we can do it in a diplomatic, peaceful way. In an innovative way, right? Tell me we live in a place where that's possible. Don't tell me we're going to... Oh, God. Anyway, so there are some reality layers where the leadership, authoritarian figures, and whoever's leading the show, and there are different iterations of this, that are very uh, dogmatic, very resistant to change, and very stubborn, and have a very like tight grip with their authoritarianism and 
then in situations like that, change has to be done by force. And I really hope we're not in a place like that because hello, free energy. Why wouldn't we be applying it if we're killing our our planet? I don't know. It's kind of weird if you've read anything or heard anything about the free energy uh, debacle is what I want to say. Hidden technology that's been suppressed apparently and the rumors are I'm going to say it's rumors because I don't know if it's propaganda or not but the rumors are if anybody develops this technology that would revolutionize our energy needs and totally change the efficiency of our energy demands and our systems it requires a big overhaul yeah but I mean it would just like cut the pollution and it would cut costs and um, uh, lots of other benefits to society. And it would really be a big push in innovative directions, mind blowing. You can look at Dr. Stephen Greer's, um, he has a documentary about it, about these hidden technologies related to free energy. Anyway, so the rumors are that anybody that develops it gets killed. Like, I don't know what's up with that. Like Nikola Tesla apparently was into the free energy thing and what happened to him, I don't know. You either get suppressed, bought out, or killed. And if you don't sell, and if you try to get your voice out, then you you just stop existing. So in places like that, where people are very, very resistant to change, then I worry that... It might be a little chaotic, but in other places where people are reasonable and also awake and conscious, it seems reasonable to me that we would be able to push society along innovation frameworks and tracks into the future without so much strife. But I don't know. I'm not in charge, so maybe I'm being a little too utopian and idealistic. Anyway, so the point is, is that We need these challenges to identify what our breaking points are, to understand who we are. And I've been speaking at the macro level, but even when we zoom into your life, right, all of the things that give you pain, that make you feel inside like something is wrong, prompt you to change something in the configuration of your reality design. And I would encourage you not to just shift away whenever you are facing a challenge, but instead to see it as an opportunity to bring new skills online or to strengthen the skills that are already emerging. I recently had a health challenge, for example, and... I, instead of just trying to ignore it and shift away from it, I'm actually trying to amplify my healing abilities and to spend time working with my body to see if I can heal and release DNA strands that might be locked up with chromatin. And this is uh, the foundation of epigenetics. Like normally our DNA is sort of like bound together and then something will unlock the chromatin that allows it, or the histones rather, that allow it to um, unwind and allow genes to come online. And if my epigenetics is rusty, my apologies. It's, I haven't been in school for a while, but <laughs> and I'm going off in memory. And so I am imagining and manifesting that I have some epigenetic changes as a result of this health challenge that are, is actually beneficial. And so instead of just shifting to a reality where I don't have the health problem, and it's minor, it's not anything significant, I'm actually seeing it as an opportunity to work on different aspects of my manifestation abilities. And Interestingly, I had a second one come up today and I, or not today, but uh, this week, the past two days. And for that one, I'm working on the speed of healing because normally for this particular thing, it takes like three to six months for it to resolve. And I'm like, okay, can I get it down in days or weeks? And 
it's miraculous by day two it's almost completely gone like i'm almost forgetting about it and so these challenges you know are minor but allow you to work on other aspects of your power of your gifts of your awareness of how you want to operate in the world it helps you understand who you are and instead of turning away from the challenges i encourage you to actually embrace them and to be that diamond in the coal mind with that understanding that you're not alone and the universe has your back and even when it seems bleak or grim you're taken care of right and thinking of this like a training school or a training camp or a training sim is one of my favorite go-tos like thinking of myself as technology knowing that we're headed into a great technological innovation period it's fun to be able to tweak things you know and to like see this experience as earth school and because it's earth school then all you got to do is graduate and your track and your program might look different from my program right but that's the main goal it's to graduate and so by studying by leveling yourself up by improving yourself your realities your consciousness bringing that online every step of the journey is very powerful right and understanding that your end goal ultimately is to emerge as a more awake centered self-mastered being that may or may not still be human at the end of it oh that's my track i'm i'm not saying you have to join me in that track but it's kind of a fun one for me to think about so i'll leave you with that but if you are interested in one-on-one reality shifting coaching and particularly if you're going through some challenge and you just need a little extra support or reframing feel free to reach out to me at sacred journey (laughs) i can't say it again this is like second time recently sacred journey productions at gmail.com okay we'll talk soon